Hey everyone. This video is about the CompuCorp 324G scientist calculator from 1973. And CompuCorp was a division of a Californian company called CDC that created very well engineered battery powered portable programmable calculators in the late 60s and early 70s. And the 324G was the most advanced model from its 320 series of scientific calculators. It supported two independent 80-step programs, and it was released in the same year as the HP35, the world's first pocket calculator. But it turns out to be more of a direct competitor to, to the HP65, released a year later. Both were programmable and cost around $800 US at the time, which is equivalent to around $6,000 now. CompuCorp devices were algebraic calculators, and the 324G has some interesting features that are missing even from modern day devices. So hardware-wise, the 3D4G is big, uh, dramatically larger than, say, this HP35, and it's hefty as well, weighing just over a kilogram. But of course, it was a lot smaller than the desktop calculators that it was aiming to replace, and the device itself is extremely well built. Uh, to me, it looks more like a piece of professional lab equipment uh, rather than a modern consumer device, and I think the design is quite elegant. Its body is built from rigid plastic and has a kickstand uh, that you can use to face it towards you. Uh, it also has this screen protector uh, that folds up so you can see the display better. The display is an orange uh, Panaflex Two, which is a similar to the old Nixi tubes uh, that are filled with neon gas. And each digit contains seven standard segments for numerals, plus two indicators for decimal points and a thousand separator. And it's quite stunning to see in the flesh. On the keyboard, there are three sliding switches, so one for angle selection, either degrees or gradients. Another to select the uh, program to load, one or two, and the last, uh, the program operating mode. Uh, there are also 43 uh, big black and white keys on the keypad. Uh, it's difficult to understand the exact logic behind how the colors are assigned, uh, but the keys are pretty satisfying to press. Uh, and uh, the ones on the number pad also have the circular indent, which might help you use the keyboard without uh, looking at it directly. So on the back, we can see the power switch, uh, the kickstand, uh, and the serial number and operating instructions. And at the time, CompuCorp marketed its devices as microcomputers rather than calculators due to their programmability. And the device could be powered uh, by uh, D-sized rechargeable nickel cadmium batteries or via a large uh, DC power supply. And to change the batteries, uh, we need to uh, squeeze these two circular round plungers uh, and then pull the case backwards. Uh, so there's no batteries installed in this one. And I'm not sure whether that is risking uh, device damage or not. Maybe someone can tell me uh, in the comments. Internally, the 324G has a stack of four PCBs, and these images are from the excellent DataMath site. Uh, the top PCB scans the keyboard and the display with two Texas instrument circuits. Uh, there are also the drivers for the high voltage of the Panaplex 2 display. The second PCB also uses a TI chipset of uh, four ICs that together implement the processing for the device. The third PCB implements the programmability features with a TI memory interface circuit, and on top, uh, three ROM components for program storage of the uh, for the calculator operating system and below for RAM, RAM chips to store both data and user programs. The last PCB converts the DC power input to different voltages for components in the calculator. So you can see that the 324G packs a lot of components in, but it didn't have uh, this quite the same level of miniaturization as HP's classic calculator series. 
So I've mentioned CompuCorp made arithmetic calculators and the 324G was quite advanced for its time and it has some interesting arithmetic shortcuts. It's also got the weirdest implementation of a shift key I've come across. Uh, but it doesn't support order of operations. So for example, if we enter two plus three times four and hit zero, uh, the answer might not be what we expect. I believe the first arithmetic calculator to support order of operations was the Casio FX39 from uh, later in 1978, which I have a separate video on. Uh, but the 324G does support <clears throat> two levels of parentheses, so we could try those. Uh, let's see. Uh, and that looks better. Uh, it also supports chaining, uh, so we can add a number to our result. Uh, and it also supports repeated operator uh, equals syntax. So, for example, hitting uh, plus equals will double our result, and times equals will square it. Uh, and there's also repeated operator syntax. Uh, so, for example, hitting plus and plus again uh, will uh, result in the same number being added each time. Uh, you can also do constant arithmetic. So, let's say we want to multiply uh, some numbers by two and a half. Uh, we can hit reset uh, and then enter two and a half times. Uh, and then we can enter our first number. So, let's say 10 and then equals. Uh, or say 50 and then equals, uh, and so on. And these uh, shortcuts are quite convenient. Uh, the 324G also has uh, 10 memory registers accessible via the usual uh, store and recall buttons. Uh, you can also do uh, direct register arithmetic. So for example, let's store two and register zero. Uh, and then we can multiply the current number uh, in the display register by the value of register zero using uh, recall uh, times and zero. So a very notable quirk of the 324G is how the second function key works. <clears throat> and it actually is a postfix operator rather than prefix. So say if we wanted to calculate <clears throat> and the sine of 90, uh, we would enter 90 and then sine. <clears throat> and we get one as expected. Uh, but to calculate the cos of sine, uh, you might expect that you would hit 90 second function uh, cos, uh, but you're not gonna, wouldn't get the right answer. Instead, what we want to do is enter 90 sine again uh, and then hit the second function key. And actually the way it works is that for all keys with two functions, uh, both answers are calculated and the second function key uh, just toggles between the two display registers. So you can actually perform any single function key operation on either register without affecting the other one. So for example, I can enter uh, TAN on uh, that register and then the other register is not affected. Uh, and yeah, it's quite mind-bending. So the last topic I'll talk about is Scratchpad programming. And <clears throat> this is a very simple version of keystroke programming where we're essentially just recording a set of keystrokes to replay. And the 324G has two separate 80-step memories. Uh, there's no way to edit existing programs, so they have to be re-entered from scratch. And we can use the start-stop key at any point in the program. Uh, we, want, we want to enter variables or data. Uh, or at the points where we want answers to be uh, displayed to the user. <clears throat> and so let's use my favorite example of the full distance equation uh, to calculate the distance an object falls in time t. Uh, and to calculate this, we just square our time and I'll multiply it by half of the gravitational uh, constant, which is around 9.8. Uh, so to program uh, the CompuCorp, we, we switch to load mode <clears throat> and we'll assume that the time is already entered in the display register. Uh, so we want to raise it to the power of 2 and then multiply it by 4.9. And then we'll hit equals. Uh, and now we want to 
stop the program to display uh, the results to the user. Uh, so to run the program, we'll switch back to run mode and we can enter a time in seconds. So let's say 10 seconds and hit start stop. Uh, so the object falls 490 meters. Now programs on the 3D4G don't terminate. Instead, the program counter just resets back to the beginning. Uh, so if we enter another time, uh, we can hit start stop again. Uh, and the program will run again. And we can use the way programs loop back to the start of memory as a primitive looping mechanism. And although there are no conditionals supported, if an error occurs, the program will stop. Uh, so we can use a divide by zero error to terminate a program based on a condition. Uh, so this program, for example, which I've loaded into program space two, uses both these quirks to calculate the Fibonacci series. Uh, we first need to load the number one into registers uh, one and two. Uh, and uh, we also need to enter the uh, number numbers we want to generate uh, of the series into the current display register. So let's enter uh, 10 loops. Uh, and now we can hit the start stop button. And so the program errored out after the last loop. Uh, so we can hit clear. And if we recall uh, register two, uh, that is the 12th Fibonacci uh, number. So in summary, the CompuCorp 324G was an impressive but quirky device from 1973. And it was clearly a high-end uh, device that had uh, high quality engineering uh, still working perfectly after uh, 50 plus years. But although CompuCorp pioneered many techniques for miniaturization, uh, to pack a desktop calculator into a portable device, they ultimately couldn't keep up with the rate of innovation at the time uh, and ultimately went out of business. Some of their engineers did end up moving on to other uh, American calculator manufacturers like HP. Uh, but they did leave behind a legacy of interesting devices that were uh, stepping stones to the calculators and portable computers we have now. Uh, so I hope you've enjoyed this video and found it useful. And if you have, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to get alerted of new videos.